Okay, well, welcome. Welcome, everybody, and welcome to uh, my brothers and siblings who are here with me today. Uh, again, my name is Peng, he and his, and with the Men Mexican Folks Network here, and continuing our conversations of kitchen table conversations where men and masking folks throughout the state of Minnesota and the group here in particular are having conversations about how we as men and masking folks continue to navigate current events and, in our lives and navigate the rigidity and our understanding of what it means to be men and masculine, um, not only during this pandemic and these hard times, but um, often creating, wanting to create a platform where folks can actually continue to have these conversations. Uh, in their own homes or in their own lives with the men that they're in relationship with or with the masculine people that they're in relationship with as well. So this is our ninth uh, talk. And we hope that these, again, these create a platform for all of you who are joining us to, to engage and uh, continue the conversations with us or continue the conversations in your own community and which will eventually lead to practices as well too. So today we have um, some new siblings that are joining us. So I'd like to also have them introduce themselves and then we continue to have Austin who is helping us with some background work uh, and always appreciative of uh, Sean and Felix as well too. But I'll, I'll let both Chris and Serana also introduce themselves as well to all of you. Hello, my name is Serrano Robinson. I use he, him, his pronouns, and I'm the Youth Restorative Program Coordinator at Menace DC. Hey, okay, my name is Chris Godsey. I also use he, him, and his pronouns. And I co-coordinate the Domestic Violence Restorative Circles Program at Menace Peacemakers. Hello everyone, I'm Felix Martinez. Uh, super happy to be here and super happy to have Chris and Serrano with us and super excited to, you know, enjoy and talk about the new topic of the day. So thank you. And hey everybody, Sean Hayes here. Uh, he, him and his pronouns for me. Um, and yeah, I'm in Duluth as well, working with Menace Peacemakers and the Men and Masculine Folks Network. So I'm, excited to talk about this because I've got lots of tension. Uh, so just looking forward to hearing what y'all say and how you're navigating this stuff as we're living through these times. So I think um, one of the reasons why this came about of uh, like the conversation that we're going to be having today amongst ourselves and with all of you who are joining us live is how do we as men and masculine folks actually navigate tension, right? Two weeks ago, we talked about gratitude and there was some tension in the conversation that we had around gratitude about like, what are we actually practicing? Are we actually doing it in gratitude in a very um, frank way where it's just like we just say it or is it a very genuine and deeply committed way we're actually um, fully committed to the gratitude and experience of giving gratitude and appreciation to others, right? And so even in that conversation, there were some tensions about like the practice and the thought about gratitude and how we and as men and masculine folks are with gratitude in our life. So bringing that to light, um, thinking about like today's conversation about like, how do we as men and masculine folks navigate tensions? Right, tensions in terms of like emotional tension, psychological tensions, tensions between the heart and the head, uh, tensions between external, our external experiences of being men and what other people are thinking about what we should be and how we should be experiencing manhood and what we should be as men compared to the tensions that are internally within ourselves or maybe a tension between internal and external in terms of what we think and how we want to be a man versus that of what other people are telling us to be, right? And so uh, I think that there are many ways in which we can have this conversation, but I'll ultimately, as um, in other previous conversations, we wanna pay very particular attention to how we, as men and masculine folks, can actually navigate these things and these issues and experiences in our lives to get to what it means to be healthy, right? To get 
to a place where we actually understand that we're not going to choose violence, we're not going to choose to harm people. Um, and it's important stories if we're able to actually share these kinds of experiences and stories with one another. So with that, um, I guess the question is like, starting from a very high level place is like, how do you navigate tensions in your life as um, you were socialized to be a man and a masculine person, and you were taught to be very rigid in your thinking? How do you um, navigate that? Like, what's your experience with that? And then how does that um, uh, impact or shape how you internally think about what it means to be a man and what it means to be masculine? Uh, because so, those things bump ag up against each other, right? So we're starting in a very high level place and then obviously we can go from other directions from there. Well, I know for me, just hearing you kind of list off all of those different levels and ways that we feel tension, um, it reminded me of, yeah, as we were sort of preparing for this conversation, someone had asked, well, is it like emotional tension or what, what kind of tension are you talking about? And um, just hearing those, you know, and that just, you know, touches the surface of like all of the tensions that we're feeling in this specific point of time, like with the pandemic and Black Lives Matter uprisings and the elections and a new year starting. Um, I'm definitely feeling lots of tension myself. Um, and it was interesting. It, it's reminding me of a conversation I was recently having or, or my wife was recently having with me and I was trying to listen and take it in and accept what she was giving me, um, which was, you know, like when I am feeling tense, even if I'm not necessarily you know, acting like a jerk or like saying mean things or like taking it out in my mind, you know, on my wife or on my child. Um, you know, she was trying to get the point across that they still feel it though, you know, like as I'm walking around through the living room and navigating our home and um, whether it's I'm, you know, stomping around or slamming a door a little bit too hard, you know, they, they feel that. Um, so, I, you know, I'm just thinking about that, like how often I'm not actually aware of how much tension I'm carrying or like what my level of tension is at, you know, because if I'm about to start a conversation or like a work project or whatever it is, and if I don't realize I'm up here, it's like the first couple of things that bug me are going to like set me off, just like what Peng said, like that quick reactionary place of, ugh. Um, however that comes out, which is usually definitely harmful, you know, whether that's at my two-year-old or my wife or, you know, just not, not acting in a good way with those people that we care about. And then thinking about beyond that too, right? How do we impact the people who we aren't as closely connected with? Yeah. Thank you, Sean. Uh, <clears throat> when I think of tension, the first thing that came to my mind is me growing up, probably my teens, uh, from my friends suffering my first cigarette and, you know, first beer, you know, uh, let's use drugs. The first thing that came to my mind is like that tension of, you know, of what my parents teach me and, and that so social pressure, you know, of what the society expect me as a man to do, you know, what my friends probably they learn in their, you know, with their family of, you know, what's a, what it takes to be a man, you know, do I have to have a cigarette to look, you know, to be a man? Do I have a need to have a beer? That social pressure and that tension of, you know, you need to have a lot of girlfriends, even sometimes from your own family, you know, if you don't have a girlfriend, you know, or a partner, your even family start asking you, why you don't have a girlfriend? Why you don't have a boyfriend? Why you, you know, so, that tension, you know, is probably the first thing that it came to my mind when you guys mentioned that. Before that, I was probably too young. There's no responsibilities. Maybe just clean your room. So, you know, I, I wouldn't call that tension. But yeah, that social pressure obviously sometimes make you make decisions maybe they weren't the, the right ones just because that, that expectation uh, of the society, that tension that you have inside or say, you know, I need to do this. You know, I, I want to I wanna look good with my friends. And, and it's... It's a awkward position when you you know feel that way just because you're making decisions that maybe they're you know they're not the right ones but 
you're doing it just because you know your friends and the society sometimes expect that from you and it is uh you know it's hard especially when you're young you don't have the maturity to make decisions or maybe you don't feel strong enough so you know what i don't want to use drugs or i don't want to have alcohol just because you know i don't want to get in trouble so it, it, it's a position that bring you a lot of stress a lot of anxiety uh is a situation that most of the time it's going to make you make bad decisions just because uh most of the time we when we're under tension we we're not thinking right you know we're not maybe taking our time to to you know to make the correct decisions and like sean said you know we have this so much pressure at this point that bringing so much to us you know pressure of the society of your family your partner those expectations bring a lot of tension and sometimes they're really hard to to handle, you know. And, and sometimes it, it takes us as individuals to, to to understand how our body react, how our mind react, and and take our time. Sometimes just take take breathe, you know, a good you know good breathe and and relax. Uh, for me personally, sometimes around all positive people, like be surrounded all people, like you know, like Sean, Pan, Chris, Serrano, that can you know motivate me. They can when I'm stress or when what, they can see them some tension on me they can you know go you know what felix what's going on how are you feeling you know so i think for me it's, it's great to be surrounded with good people when you feel that way and you know your body take your time you know have a walk you know just because most of the time if we make a decision under tension it could be probably not the best one Anywhere. Not even 15 minutes in, <clears throat> and I got like 90 minutes worth of stuff to say in response to both Sean and, and Felix. This is cool. Um, when I think about tension, uh, some of the words that I think about have already come up. One of them is pressure. I also think about force and forces, and I also think about balance. Uh, and in the way I sort of I can't put words to how like the picture of how it looks in my head. Um, but I see a difference between negative tension, you know, something that is pulling uncomfortably or putting something out of balance and a, a productive tension, which keeps things in balance, right? I don't, I try to avoid extremes and I know just enough about Buddhism to understand a little bit about the middle path, right? Finding something that's not an extreme. Um, and I spend a lot of time pondering that, you know, how do I, how do I know when I'm in balance as opposed to, to letting myself be pulled too far one way or doing something that pulls me in another direction. Um, that's all kind of like, you know, um, like a theoretical, like I, way out here kind of, kind of head in the clouds type stuff for me. Um, part of what I what Sean was saying that resonated with me was the when I am experiencing attention, um, I sometimes am, am aware, I'm less aware of it than Shannon, my wife, or even our dogs. Uh, Shannon and I don't have kids. Uh, it's me, Shannon, and two dogs in the house. And um, there are times when Shannon will say, hey, is, some, is something going on with you? And usually my response to that is, you know, it's never a, well, no, that's interesting. Why do you ask? It's no, no, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to be how I am. Why do you have to ask me questions like that? What do you mean is something going on with me? And then I stop and I say, oh, I think something's going on with me. Uh, and we've been married almost 20 years. And part of, part of following that pattern for me has produced uh, a level of mindfulness that doesn't always allow me to catch that before it starts radiating out into other people's and other living beings space. But it's given me more of a vocabulary. And, and what I'm kind of long-windedly trying to get to is that one of the ways I try to deal with my tension is to identify it and name it. Uh, and sometimes that's all it, all it needs for me to like feel relaxed or for Shannon to say, thank you for saying that because I, I could feel something was going on. Uh, and it was, the situation was getting more tense because I was, I was trying to figure out what part of you, what version of you was gonna be present in the house throughout the day. 
So um, that, that, you know, mindfulness is kind of a catchphrase now. A lot of people use the word, a lot of people see it in, in a lot of different ways. I just try to be self-awareness about what's going on with my body, what's going on with my thinking. If I'm, if I'm responding certain ways or something is setting me off, I try to do a systems check and just think, what's, what's going on with that? Did I have one too many whiskeys last night and I need to just be upfront about the fact that, that that's affecting me? Did I, do I need to get outside and, and get my heart rate up and breathe? Do I need to, you know, is there, is there something I feel bad about or some other sort of way about? And then if I name it, I can figure out what to do about it. Um, so it's, it's noticing, it's naming, it's being honest about what I find or what someone else has given back to me. And then not just stopping there, but also figuring out what to, what to do. And even just the, so I even like the question, right, about like, how do you navigate it? Because it just proves like Chris's point to like some, to like naming it. That's actually like the first step. Like sometimes, like first of all, as men, we actually don't want to, we, it's hard for us to approach a conflict that's not actually physical when you think about it. Like everything else we cool with when it comes to like sports, all types of weird, like physical shit. We, we're good at like approaching those conflicts. But when it's, when it comes down to being like emotionally or like mentally available, we kind of struggle with that. You know, and it's weird. So a lot of us actually don't even take the time to start to navigate. We're not even on the road yet. <laughs> and we don't even take that time to, to, to look at it or name it. Like, we'll just let it, like, drift right over our heads. And just like Sean said, like, I'm pretty much preaching to the choir while renaming what y'all said. Like, as Sean said, it's, it's an energy. We forget that. Like, the same way how I walk around, like, places that people are like, oh, I feel that you feel good. Like, I, I feel that. It's the same way, <laughs> flip of a coin, when you're not feeling good. We always assume that like only when we feel good do we radiate energy, but energy is like around the clock. Energy don't wait for you. So if it, if you're hot yourself, like people are gonna feel that as well. So I think the biggest part is acknowledging that you are having tensions for yourself, like or in general. Um, I always say like I rather I rather like discuss with other people than come home and fight with myself mentally because you got to come back to you as a man. You have to come back to you. So I'm not going to be out there like lying about that I'm not feeling, you know, <laughs> that I'm not feeling good and I'm over here like making other people feel bad about it. For me, I'd rather fight like have that battle with myself because then at least I know that I'm fed when I, when I get back home. Um, and pension, it's, 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 it's something that, that we all deal with and it's something that's actually really natural um, based on just, just even passion, right? You can have like tension just through the passion. Like I find myself having tension all the time just because I love the kids and I'm just trying to figure out different ways to... To, to, to actually get that message across. Like every time a barrier comes up, my attention comes from wanting to beat that barrier. So that's a positive, like, right? Like that's me growing off of a positive, but the tension is still there. So it's acknowledging that tension can be normal as well. Um, and for me, I, yeah, I, after, after acknowledging that is there, I just try to do the things that I know that like actually keep me grounded. Um, Cause I'm a very like emotionally expressive person. So you're not gonna like, I'm not gonna walk past you being heated and you're not going to notice it <laughs> like that'd be a full-on lie you know and as men we try to do that like and it's it's weird we rather just lie and instead of just say i'm actually hurt right now i'm not okay i'm not doing good um so i just want to normalize just just the acknowledgement of not feeling okay like that's very very normal um what is it we have 365 days a year i'm 25 so if you times those two I, there's there's no way every day i was cool every day i was good every day i was you know what i mean so even if i have to bring it out statistically there's no way that every day of my life is going to be good or it won't provide like tension. So I think just acknowledging that it's normal. Um, and then having those things that rely on, like I go and work out, um, even if it's at home, just try to do like 10 pushups, see how I feel, go outside, hit the air, see how I feel. Um, and just kind of doing different things too, as well. Like I know for me, when I get stressed out, like sometimes even the things that I'm used to doing, like don't work in the moment. And then we'll just be like, all right, fuck it. I'll just be angry. But now it's like, no, nah, I'd rather try something different. Okay, let's try something that I haven't done in a while. Let me try to go color something real quick. So I think for me, it's just kind of like acknowledging that it's there. And at the same time, just trying to like loosen the tension, like just trying to know, just trying to like pretty much like feed it in a good way. So that way it's kind of getting lower and lower. Cause for me, like the way I operate, I, f I feel like my energy bar, <laughs> like I can feel like when I'm at 90% and I even feel like when I'm at 70%. So I actually feel it go down. Like I try to be that much aware of like how I'm feeling. 
Um, so I think it's really just about it's it's merely about the the awareness of it. Um, I think that was a really really big key is just being like, damn, I'm not feeling okay. And in order for me to feel better for other people, I got to do you know what's what's best for myself. Whether it's taking space, I'm a big advocate for taking space around even people you love. Like it's it's not even like nobody's fault that you're taking space. It's you actually conquering that that time by yourself. It's you taking that time to battle that that tension, that fear, or whatever it is in that moment of time. So, I think for me, like being a Taurus, like thinking of the bull, I try to like just hit it head on sometimes, like and just see like you know what's really going on and eventually it really does help and i'm like damn i was really feeling this because of this and now i can go back to the people that love me and i love them like without bleeding on them you know because as men we that's normal too it's like we could just bleed on people just because we know that they're going to be around and that's the weirdest part it's like you love somebody so much that you'll bleed on them because you know that they'll be there like it's sort of like a fucked up way of love like sorry for my language but like a I fucked up response to it, um, in my opinion. So thank you. Yeah, I was really thinking about that, that awareness piece too, um, Serrano. And I was thinking, is that it? Um, but no, like you, you hit it like you're, and I've been lucky to be able to experience like being with you in person, you know, pre COVID. And like, I think the second piece of that is the honesty piece, like what you said, like you, you know, what I've experienced from you um, in our friendship and in our like work relationship is that you are really honest. And I feel like that's, that's so rare, you know, like, I, I can't remember if it was Chris, I think it was Chris who was saying, you know, like when someone comes to us and is like, hey, you know, what, what's going on, I can feel this tension. And like, you know, for me too, that immediate response of no, I I'm fine, you know, like, um, I don't know what you're, where you're picking this up from. And then it's like, after the fact, it's like, of course, it's like the vibe, it's the energy, it's, um, gosh, and, and we can be so oblivious to it, you know, sometimes, and those people who are closest to us, um, you know, really, like, bear the brunt of that, I think, just like what you're saying, like, our stuff lands on them you know like i've been a part of trainings and different talks where it's like okay if we're talking about something heavy or tense like let's let's like physically try to brush that off afterwards and and i think you know i think of that often where it's like okay am i just brushing this right onto amy my wife am i brushing it right onto my little baby who's you know still trying to figure out what what is it like to be a human what's it like to have a dad who gets angry and frustrated and how how does she deal with that and how do i deal with that um so it's like for me i'm thinking about what yeah what's what's under that like um dishonesty you know because it is it's like i'm i'm lying you know to amy when she comes to me and says hey something something feels wrong here and you know, and she's coming from a place of love. And I think the other thing for me is um, my brain just like automatically jumps to this place where it's like, well, she's judging me. She, you know, she must think I'm a horrible husband, father, da, 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 da whatever. Um, and I don't know why my brain like immediately goes there. Um, so it's like a retraining of like, oh, okay, this person loves me. They, you know, deeply care. I, I have a trusting relationship with them, you know, so why would I want to push that person away rather than like a stranger come in and being like, hey, you seem tense. Um, yeah, it's just all of our people, you know, take that on. Um, and it ruins days. I mean, it just, it just happened to us on I think it was Saturday, you know, like I woke up, I am not a morning person. I'm very crabby. Um, but I don't put that on on Facebook. You know, I don't share that with a lot of people, but Amy and Eleanor see it every morning. Um, and it's like how we start our days and Saturday, I just could not get through it. And it was affecting them. And it was like, it ruined our entire day. And we were able to come back together and like talk about that later. But it's like if you can't recognize it and like you're not willing to be open to like what's really going on in there it's just it's going to ruin it you know i think i think you are you know just paying back off of what you're sharing there um sean and a lot of what was being shared too is like the deeper part of it in terms of the question that you asked sean of like why is that and where is it coming from 
I think one aspect of what I know to be true is that it comes from obviously our um, place of like feeling defensive, like we have to protect ourselves and not expose ourselves. And what's that, what is that tied to and what is that connected to? And so when we look through a very particular gender analysis and gender lens through that, then we can see that it's through our socialization as men and masculine folks that we needed to protect ourselves. If we were taught every day that we were to be in charge, that means I need to be in charge of me too. And I need to make sure nobody diagnose me, nobody tell me what it is I should be doing. Nobody better tell me what it is that uh, and how it is that I'm feeling. But everybody better know what it is that I'm feeling and how it is that I'm feeling and take care of it, right? So it's like this really funky place that we're in. I think um, in, in the navigating of tensions, whether we value it as good or as bad, what becomes bad of it, right, in terms of the negative experiences, when we start associating those tension to assumptions that are based in beliefs of how men are supposed to be, right? The rigidity of how men are supposed to be, like the traditional ideas of what it means to be masculine and men, like strong, strong, um, you need to be the caretaker, you need to be the one that makes decisions, you need to be the one that doesn't show your emotions to other, right? When it's those assumptions that we conjure up that's based in those beliefs that then make our tensions even worse, then therefore then we choose and act upon it, the harm and the violence, because it's coming from that place of like, why is she questioning me? What the hell is going on? You know, excuse my language, but, or like, is she purposely doing this to me? You know, when we're talking about intimate heterosexual intimate relationships, you know, or, or is that, per, is that friend of mine now just playing, you know, I should be, I should be careful about that because as men, we're not supposed to be uh, having other people play us at all, right? We need to be on our game. We need to make sure we're on top of it. Don't let people screw you around because people will screw you, you know? Uh, and so if we're taught those things, then our assumptions becomes that of like, whether it's true or not, I know I do this often is like, whether it's true or not, I'm like, she knows, you know, to my partner, she, she knows, referencing my partner, she knows that I don't like this. She must be doing this on purpose. She must be. And it's like, as good as I am, or as I, as I think about my moving to what it means to be healthy, and I, I think about what it means to be healthy in terms of masculinity and manhood, I still have those thoughts. It comes up. Because it comes up because I'm surrounded by and these messages on a daily basis, whether it through, be through my parents, my other friends who are not working to undo gender or their socialization of what it means to be a man. And they're sending messages that it's okay for me to be thinking that way because she must then be doing something to me, right? And, and then in my navigating of the tension is that then I get all pissed off, do silent treatment, don't talk to anybody, you know, or I don't care what's going to happen. And like a lot of what you shared is that who, who gets hurt by that and who gets harmed by that is the people who are closest to me. And then I feel, and then after that, I have no responsibility to actually resolve any of it. We just move on with life. Life should just be okay after that. After pain comes off of his whatever, life should just be okay. And let's just continue having relationships with one another, you know? Thing that, that um, that's a specific form of tension that you just named without naming it as directly as I'm about to, is that so I'm, <clears throat> I've learned some things. And this is me speaking for myself and also something I've observed in, in some other men who are, who are, trying to progress beyond the script that a lot of boys are, are given, uh, especially straight cis boys when, when we're growing up is, so the script we're given that says, here's, here's how you will know you're a man when you're grown up. Here are the examples. You know, and I, I, I followed that script for, for a long time while simultaneously questioning it. I was, I was, I was lucky enough to grow up in a home where, my mom and dad um, 
embodied some stereotypical gender roles pretty, pretty typically, but also completely blew apart some others. I saw my mom and dad be, be very equal decision makers. My mom made more money than my dad. My, you know, it was, so I saw a lot of examples of a lot of things. So I sort of had a, a built-in question mark. But then I also had this, this set of experiences in my 30s where I just had to realize that what I thought I was thinking about, especially women I was in relationships with, was not how I was treating them. So I had these, these theoretical thoughts, these, these things I actually believed about um, equality and equity. And uh, there were, I truly had, I had true friendships with women. I truly equally valued women and took women as seriously as I take men. But then I had no problem being dismissive and controlling. And well, I shouldn't say I had no problem. I, I felt a great tension between all those things I truly believed and the way I treated women in relationships, but something in my head was allowing me to justify it. Um, and then I had the tension of trying to figure that out, right? So why, why do I treat this person differently from this person? Or why was I friends with this person and now we're boyfriend and girlfriend? And I feel entitled to certain things from her and to act in certain ways um, toward her. Um, and I know that affects those responses, that, that influences those responses I described before. You know, like when, when Shannon says to me, hey, what's going on with you? You seem like you're in a rough spot today. And I say, well, no, I'm not. And why would you ask me that? No, I don't feel like it can even just be myself. I'm just being myself. I feel like, Part of that is, is that it's, it's like when she's not trying to push a button, but what she doesn't know she's doing is hitting that spot in my brain where I'm trying to figure out even in that moment, why do I get so impatient with her asking me that question when I would not get impatient with someone else asking that question? What is it? So. Um, I started off trying to make a clearer point than that. I had something a lot better to say, but I got myself all twisted up. But but that ten that tension between what I what I truly believe and what I actually do, um, it's I'm I'm way better at making sense of that than I used to be because I used to not see that there was a difference. Now I see there's a difference, and seeing it has created tensions of its own. Um, and not tensions that I like, I don't feel like that's a burden to carry or anything. I'm grateful for those tensions. Those are tensions I want in my life because I need to figure them out. But um, it's, it's one of the more nefarious aspects of the way gender socialization works to me is that um, I don't think anyone tried to condition me. Anyone who did that was thinking this is gonna create some problems for him down the line. I think they're just that, you know, this is a, so anyway, that gets into a whole bunch of other stuff. That's like a semester long gender studies class there. But I appreciate you naming that, that, that you know, trying to be a person who's evolving and in, in who you are and how you behave and what you do and still carrying the vestiges of those decades of lessons you were taught you're trying to unlearn things and get rid of them, but they're still in your body and your brain. That's that's hard stuff for me, and I'm grateful to, to notice it. There is a question, um, and maybe for you too, Chris, but I think other folks can definitely chime in as well. And I know Serrano and Felix have other thoughts as well too, but um, what is a good way to approach when you feel a vibe or a feeling from someone? Uh, Chris, you had mentioned when your spouse asks what is going on with you, your response maybe comes off strong. Why would you ask that? I have a passionate husband and I will ask what's going on and he automatically gets irritated, more irritated. So I'm wondering if there's a better way to approach or ask about the vibe I'm feeling. 
So I was wondering. If uh, that's, I was wondering if I could just speak to that like real quick because I just like saw it early and it just like it just hit me. Um, so first of all, like that's to Joe Morales. Like that's a beautiful question to ask somebody. Like I think I'm gonna try to be as clear as I can without like like tipping anybody off. Like that is the best form of question that like that you can ask. Like I think. You know, there is, you know, the, in the normal setting, in the normal world, there should be no better other way that you ask the person you love, like, what's going on then? What's going on? I think it's honestly, it's rather on men that we take that question so fucking seriously. Um, so that's what I wanted to say. Like, that question is bogus. Like, not you, like, not um, the person who asked it, but just the question of, like, you know, is there a better way? There should not be a better way, right? Like, that's the part of love is, like, my partner knowing. First of all, your partner's, you're right, right? Like, that's your partner knowing you. The part of love is, is your partner saying like, hey, even though you're not, you're not going to acknowledge that you're feeling something, I feel that you're feeling something. Um, so that's actually like a beautiful thing. Um, and I think like down on the bottom, you asked like, they asked like, is there some like better way? Like there should not, I guess my answer is there should not be a better way. Fuck that. Like, you know, we should be, as men, we should be to the point where to where somebody I love should be like, hey, you're, 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 you're acting a certain way. And I should be like, you know what? You're absolutely right. But to answer that question in general, um, because I do acknowledge the words, the world that we do live in, I always bounce between the word that we want to see and the reality. I'm a big realist. Um, so I would say just helping him acknowledge like how you feel about it, right? Like, I think it's as a man, like, I'm like, what the fuck? Like, I can't keep like making people feel a certain way. And, you know, just, and you have feelings too, you know, and, that, and that's the biggest thing is you have a value in feeling. So maybe even going off and not going off, but like going to the point where you help him acknowledge how that's making you feel like, even if you ain't acknowledging that you're going through something, I acknowledge that you're going through something and it's affecting me. Um, Cause that's always a premise, right? It's like, that's that's how you figured it out because you loved him and you felt that. Um, something in you tingled something, you know, and whether it was the back of your neck, wherever we, wherever we got our feel goods at, um, something tingled because you have the actual connection with that person. You was you were spot on, right? And as men, we are fucking up on the response. Um, but to kind of answer that, just kind of make, like maybe help him understand like how that's making you feel. Because I think as men, too, we, we tend to not, like, not realize or sometimes not even care, like, how, how much being shitty, like, affects the other people around us. Like, we're like, I'm cool. We're just feeling how I'm feeling, and that's okay. Um, as a teen, I know for sure, like, I, my intention was to, like, all right, if I do shitty things, I'm going to just affect myself. But that's bullshit. I have a mom. I have a sister. I have a girlfriend now. So it's weird to say that, like, any, any negative feelings only affect me. Um, so I just wanted to get at that quick as like, that's a beautiful question. Like in a, in a, in a better world, we should never have to have to have a different way of asking, like you are connected that, that, and that's a beautiful thing, um, that you felt that. And maybe even telling him like, Hey, I know you felt that maybe you don't want to acknowledge that, but I felt that through you, um, because I love you. And that's, that's, that's really dope. So thank you. Oh, energy. I think you guys hit the spot when you said, you know, that tension is our energy because, you know, we, we can feel it. We can feel with a coworker, we're a family member, with someone around you is going through a lot of tension. Uh, me growing up, I was the kind of man that I was teach to, you know, to keep it, you know? So I always build that tension till I get to a point that I exploded, you know, and, you know, and then that explosion affect other people. You know, sometimes that explosion, when you have, uh, siblings, when you have little kids, they see that, you know, and they learn that behavior and for them in their mind. They think, well, that's how you're supposed to deal when you're going through tension, to yell, to fight. And obviously that's not the best way, you know, we need to deal with. And it's when that you get to that point that you see that that tension is affecting others when you need to say, you know what, uh, I need to see myself. I maybe need to look for help because it's okay to ask for help. You know, I think that was probably one of my problems. I thought, you know, I'm not supposed to tell anybody I'm going through this hard time. I didn't, but when it came to that point that I caused harm is when then I realized like, damn, I screw it up. And then maybe I don't have the strength to, to apologize just because, you know, because I'm a man, I'm supposed to be strong. So uh, very important to, when you see people who are going through tension, especially in this difficult time with COVID, with stress of work, you know, relationship, is to, like Theron say, you know, you just take your time, talk to that person, say you love them, say you're here to help them, you know, 
what's going on, you know, how I can support you, you know, even if you don't know that person, maybe it's someone that works, someone that is a neighbor, you just let them know, you know what, I'm here to help you. If you need to talk, come talk to me, you know, let's take a couple minutes. Let's, let's, let's show people that we're better than that. We need to be more supportive. We need to create a better, better world, big world, just because maybe that bad decision or because that people is going through stress, going to do something that's going to affect other people. So how we can stop that, how we can normalize that, yeah, we go through hard times, that it's okay to have tension, but as individuals, we need to learn to, you know, look for ways to deal with that, you know, it could be through art, could be through, you know, doing exercise, could be through watching TV, sports, could be many things, but you need to find a way how you can deal with that in a way that you, you know, you can, you can teach others, you know, that it's not okay that to, to explode, it's not okay to, you know, uh, cause harm just because of that tension that we all go through. So yeah, never be afraid to ask someone or to just because it's like you guys say, it's an energy to approach that person, let them know, you know what, everything's going to be okay. I'm here to hear you. I'm here to support you. And sometimes doing that, you can, you know, save a life. You can, you know, save other people to be heard just because of that tension that we build every day. I appreciate so much of what you just shared and just like the general direction of this conversation, you know, it's like the thing that popped up in my brain is like accountability, you know, we talked about that a couple of weeks ago and it's like in those moments thinking about this question from Joe, which is, um, you know, so relatable because I feel like, you know, my partner does the same thing where she, you know, she can feel that and um, so not only is she aware of it, like she can see it and acknowledge what that is, then it's like her brain and her heart automatically go to, okay, how can I make this better for him? How can I try to ease that tension? And, and that's from a place of love and deep caring. And I feel like we, you know, we as men folk, masculine people, like so often just take advantage of that. We expect that. We um, you know, if we aren't getting that deep consideration and care and taking care of us kind of thing, um, it's like we feel like we're wronged or something. And it's like in that moment, um, it just brought that to my mind of like, that's the moment where we have a choice, you know, whether we're going to step forward and say, yeah, I got to look at this, you know. And I was thinking, you know, specifically around this question, you know, I know for me, when I'm, my tension level is right here, um, it's not a good time to have a conversation about how can we do this better? How can we communicate better about our emotions? And, and then it's like, you know, it's usually like a day or two later where um, Amy and I can come back together. Like we've kind of gotten through whatever that tense thing was. And it's usually, you know, her um, at this point, you know, saying, hey, you know, remember when that happened? Can we kind of talk about that and kind of figure out really what was going on and and when i'm in that clearer space you know it's like i can actually think rationally and logically and um connect to those those places and to that part of me that does want to grow that does want to do better and um you know wants to stop causing as much harm as i'm causing you know sometimes it feels like uh i don't know picturing like a dragon with a giant tail just like I'm walking through the house and I'm just swatting everybody as I go and and just you know it's like well this is me this is just me that's my tail watch out uh and it's it's not about that at all it's like yeah what what am I bringing to this relationship whether it's an intimate one or a friendship or whatever it is it's like we have that role and that opportunity though I think sometimes it's like oh this is more work I'm gonna have to try to figure this out and I have to like think about how I'm feeling and or or feel how I'm feeling and not try to suppress that and like just numb out to that so it's like that choice is there I feel like I have that choice so many times through each day and I don't always make the best one you know but it's like if I can start noticing um, and another piece of this too that I'm thinking about that we've sort of mentioned is like that, how does it show up in our bodies, um, which is something I've been thinking a lot about and I've been able to notice more. Um, like I, I so often times will like be living up in my brain and thinking like, why do I feel this way and blah, 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 blah. 
And it's like, if I can drop down a little bit lower, it's like, I can feel the tension, you know, like I can feel it in my shoulders. I can feel my jaw is like trying to break all my teeth off because I'm clenching it so tightly or my neck or, or whatever it is. It's hard to breathe even sometimes. And I think for me, just like when I can, because it's a new practice for me, when I can notice that I'm like, oh, I'm feeling that, then just to like stop and take like three deep breaths. And then I feel a zillion times better. It's like that easy, but I get caught up in so much of this other crap that it's, you know, keeps me stuck. So I just want to uh, echo and give my own version of what some other folks have already said, um, but maybe especially Serrano. Um, that last question in, in Joe's comment, I'm wondering if there is a better way to approach or ask about the vibe um, I can only see part of the vibe I'm noticing or experiencing or something. Um, it's possible. It's possible there's the perfect combination of words, the perfect tone of voice, the perfect facial expression, the perfect body language, that when you pick up on that stuff, you can talk to your, um, your spouse and ask the question in a way that's not going to elicit the responses we've all been talking about. But I don't think it's probable because it's not the way you're asking the question. It's, it's not anything you're, you're doing. Um, I think part of what, and this is, I'm speaking from my own experience and from uh, experiences I've built in about 10 years of facilitating conversations of men who have been arrested for using violence against women. Um, I don't, I don't want to say that, that, um, well, I'll, I'll say it this way. What I do want to say is that a lot of the topics that get talked about in those group conversations are topics that um, I could talk about with my buddies at the same time. I don't mean to dismiss the, the actual violence that people have used, but that violence comes from socialization that we all go through. That's my perspective. So my, the perspective I've built through my own experience and, and through doing that work with men is that... Um, when someone responds impatiently to that question, it's not about the question. It's about, it's about, it's partially about a choice to respond a particular way. Uh, and that choice is based on whatever is most important in the moment. Is it most important for me to make sure that whatever I say expresses love and safety? Or is it most important for me that she knows I'm really frustrated and pissed off and I don't like being asked that question. And like 15 years ago, if someone would have said, hey, Chris, you can be as pissed off as you want, but you can express that in a way that doesn't put her in a rough spot, I would have said that's maybe, but I don't really believe that. But some people told me that often enough that I decided to test it. And holy shit, it turns out they were right. That I can, that I, there's a way I can say, I'm really struggling right now. And I, you know, and it doesn't mean that it's going to be like a Disney movie ending or a Lifetime movie where everything is just perfect, but it does mean that I'm not going to harm her. I'm not going to punish her for asking a legit question. Like the way I respond is gaslighting. Hey, sweetie, what's going on? I'm noticing something. No, you're not. I'm fine. That's, that's bullshit. I mean, and I, and I did it for a long time. And one of the, so one of the ways that I've known this is that like she, Shannon and I have had the same conversations that Sean is describing uh, him and his partner having, where after the moment of tension and, and crisis is gone, we'll come together and she'll say, hey, is there a way I can, ask, like this is a legit question or a conversation we've had, is there a way I can ask you about this? You know, and way back in the process, I would say, yeah, if, you know, sometimes if you could just approach me this way instead of the way you did. And so next time she approaches me that way, I said I wanted to be approached and she gets the same response. So we repeat the conversation. Okay, so I tried it the way you said you wanted. Is there a different way? Yeah, how about you switch it up and do this thing? She does that thing, same response. So now we're getting to the point where even a knucklehead like me starts saying, hmm, she's doing everything I ask her to do. And I'm still responding the same way. 
what's the com what's the common denominator here? What needs to change? It's not the way she's asking. It's not that she's asking. It's that I've got something that I need to work on. Um, and when I finally said that out loud to her, you know, I, I said, and I'm about done, by the way. I apologize for rambling on and on. It's my first time here. I should be more, more patient or more, more mindful. Um, I said, hey, sweetie, I, you know, I've noticed something about myself. I've noticed that um, it doesn't really matter how you ask me that, that I just kind of always respond the same way. And I want to let you know I'm working on that. Is that something you've noticed? <laughs> You know, and she gets this look on her face like, have I noticed? Yes. <laughs> yes, I have. Uh, but it was also like that was to me, that was that was part of that naming process. Like I had to, I had to admit to myself, I'm the problem here. And I'm not saying she's never she's never been like she's never been sarcastic. I'm not saying she's like she's not an angel. She's not a perfect human being. But in this particular kind of situation, it was always me who was the problem. So I had some stuff to work on. Um, so that's just, that's an extended way of saying, I, I, think it's, I think it makes a lot of sense as a caring partner to want to know, is there a way I can do this differently? Um, but I think it's a, it's a misplaced sense of responsibility for something that is the other person's problem. Um, I also just want to quickly say, um, I agree with, with the other fellows. A lot of times when Shannon's asking me these questions, it's coming from a place of deep love and concern. She wants to know if she can help. Sometimes it's also coming from a place of defending herself and, and needing to say, bro, you're making shit miserable for everybody here. And I do love you and I do care about you, but you've got to knock this shit off because it's, it's damaging me. It's affecting me. Um, and and that's something men need to be comfortable with. You know, I'm, I'm great. I'm really comfortable all the time. It's someone saying, hey, what can I do for you? Um, I had to learn to be comfortable with somebody saying, here's what you need to stop doing because it's affecting me negatively. That was, that was hard for me. I think that, you know, Chris, that your, your story and the sharing that you just did there was, was a good example i think to me that demonstrates how i need to take responsibility and we as men and masculine folks need to take responsibility right for our actions and our reactions uh, i think about like in the, just some closing thoughts here because i know we can continue this conversation which it sounds like we should continue in two weeks this conversation because there's just so much there to dive into uh, because of the way in which we actually live our life and experience our life. And so just in my closing thoughts here, I'm just thinking about like responsibility, 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 you know, and that responsibility is that I have the responsibility to think about how I should behave, how I should be acting. And I need to always be thinking about how am I going to act in this moment? How am I going to be acting in this moment? Right, instead of reacting and then and then putting it on the reaction, which is the privilege part that I have as a man of like, you know, like what Sean said, the tail. Just deal with the tail. You know, I'm Godzilla, so deal with the tail. And it's your fault if you don't know how to deal with it, but don't blame me because I have a tail that's wagging, you know. You better just get out of the way. And so I just think about responsibility in this conversation that we're having here. So Thank you for the sharing and thank you for pushing me to actually be more intentional about that place and giving you all space as well here to give your last closing thoughts about what you're sort of taking away. What I take away, I think, is the importance of paying attention to our bodies, pay attention to our surroundings, uh, you know, be, be aware of that energy, you know, tension, because we all go through that. So, like you guys mentioned, just be sure to that everybody around you is safe, that they're doing okay. Don't feel, don't be scared of asking them how they're doing. Uh, what it comes to my mind right away too is those 
people sometimes and those big crowds or those big signs that said free hugs, you know, obviously, you know, we need more love. We need more love. We need more compassion. We need, we need, uh, we need to take care of each other. So when it comes to my mind right now to close in, I'll send a hug to everybody who's going through a difficult time. We're going to be okay. We're going to be all right. Uh, things will get better. And yeah, tension is something that we need to learn to deal with. And I appreciate all your stories from Sean Serrano and Chris and, and Peng and, and we, you know, we can do much better. Or just in the moment, like last few words, like like Felix was, Felix was saying, just kind of kind of acknowledging how you're feeling in the moment. I ha I've, I've seen and I have done, um, you know, enormous harm and I've broken actual relationships because of what I chose to do in the moment, which was easier for me, um, which was not to acknowledge how I really felt. Um, so in the moment, shit, I'm only 25, but I've noticed that in the moment you could lose a lot of love, trust, and everything in people, rightfully so, just for not acknowledging how you really feel right then and there and then doing what you think is easier, um, which is guarding yourself and hurting other people. So thank y'all for having me too, by the way. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm just more and more aware of being in the middle of a process. I'm somewhere different from where I used to be. And I'm nowhere close to, to being where I want to be in terms of just how I embody the things that I, I truly believe. And just it's it's uh, it's one of the reasons I value conversations like this because I just learned a lot. And I want to say, Felix, um, when you said we're going to be all right, uh, one of the first things I do when I'm done working today is going to be to fire up some Kendrick Lamar and listen to him telling people that it's going to be all right. Thank you for reminding me. I haven't listened to that song in a while. Yeah, I know for me, um, it's like the first thing that came to my mind was I've got some work to do, more work, lots of work to do. Um, and I think um, oftentimes that feels like a lonely road, you know, it feels like we're the only ones thinking about these things or trying to do better or, you know, just trying to do things a different way. I mean, like, look where things have gotten us you know, to this day, um, people just causing so much harm and pain and, um, hmm, we're going to be all right. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> um, so just, I mean, having these connections um, is so meaningful for me, you know, I, I don't know that I've ever really had, um, you know, deep connected relationships with other men and masculine folks. Um, so this is super, super meaningful. And I just really appreciate um, how much I take away from each of these conversations. So thank you to each of you and Chris and Serrano. Um, super lovely to have you both here with us. I'm sure we'll be seeing them again in the future and um, missing Ed and Brandon and Roderick as they're off doing their own things right now. So we're just thinking about them as well. Um, and yeah, we're just very grateful for all of you who have joined us, you know, whether it's for the whole 60 minutes or a little less, um, or, you know, five, 10 minutes, um, catch what you are able. And um, we're really grateful when folks chime in and share like what is going on. And if you relate and resonate um, with what we're saying, you know, because I think the more that we bring people into these conversations, the more we see. Um, we're all struggling with these these very same things. We have very similar ways of reacting and defending ourselves and doing those things. And um, so, yeah, it's it's really really great to be able to have people who can um, say, "Hold on, that's not great. You can do better. We can we can do better." So thank you again for joining us. This is our ninth conversation already. I don't even know how it's gone that fast, but um, our next conversation will be two weeks uh, from today. That's actually gonna be on Thursday, December 31st. So join us on New Year's Eve before um, any of those plans later in the day at noon Central Standard Time. Um, we also want to, again, just thank our sponsors and partners, Philanthropy Partners, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Minnesota, uh, as well as the Women's Foundation for all of their support um, for these conversations and making them happen. 
Uh, and just a reminder, if you haven't already, uh, like our page, click on that like button. Um, you'll get updates about when we're going live next and get those reminders. Um, and you can stay connected with us that way. And also just a reminder, uh, you are able to find all of our previous conversations on YouTube. And that link is here in the description of this video. So go and check out all of the really cool things that we've been talking about. Um, cool and challenging and beautiful and empowering things. So again, thank you all for joining us. And we will see you all in two weeks.